thinking about using Linux, don't do it. At least not until after this video. Because in this video, I'll give you all the excuses not to, so you can avoid all the troubles using it. Let's start with gaming. Even though the topic of Linux gaming are getting hotter and hotter, even though we're miles ahead compared to the old days, even though NVIDIA has decided to open source their video driver, even though SteamOS and Steam Dex are getting extremely popular these days, and even though there are lots of happenings going on in the Linux gaming community every single day, there is still not a lot of big gaming companies other than Valve and Epic Games publicly decide to make investment in Linux, especially the online gaming corporations. <sighs> One of my best friends keeps saying he would switch to Linux instantly if Black Desert Online, a Korean-based MMO becomes available on Linux, which in my opinion is probably never gonna happen because not many gaming developers care about Linux in North America itself where Linux gaming is actively generating hits let alone those in Asia. Next, even if you're one of those lucky guys like me who plays only the Linux compatible games listed on ProtonDB, there are big chances you may still need to tweak it every time the games get a new update on Steam. The main reason I stopped playing Divinity Original Sin 2 is because I got fed up fixing it every time it gets an update. Especially after I started this YouTube channel, where I started to need some quick gameplay to show in my videos. Finally, there is the age-old anti-cheats problem. The online games may never be able to come on Linux due to the anti-cheat programs. Let me elaborate. You might have heard that Linux is a privacy-centric system. Compared to Windows, it may not be more secure, but it is definitely more privacy-oriented. It is like this because of its design philosophy. Everything you use in Linux, from applications, desktops, all the way down to Linux kernel, are usually developed separately. One of the well-known concepts in Linux work is that everything is designed for a specific job. Do only that and do it well. The downside is that Linux desktop can never provide a level of integration for users like Windows, Mac, or even the notorious Android. Everything is minding their own business without having the awareness of others. But the upside is that there are tons of great applications available for Linux users also because they're so focused on doing one thing well. The isolated responsibility also means that applications are unlikely to gain the access they don't have the need to. And that is exactly why anti-cheats can work well on Linux. Cheaters are usually able to cheat in games when utilizing part of the system where the games does not have the access to. This means that a lot of anti-cheats have to use the admin rights to check if there is any modification on the system level. And that is totally not welcome by the Linux standard. Even when the games are running in Wine, which is an emulated Windows environment. Another reason you may want to stay away from Linux is drivers. Yes, you heard it right. I put drivers in second place because driver has not been the biggest issue anymore if your excuses for not using Linux is NVIDIA driver. Not only is it easy to install NVIDIA drivers on the majority of the popular distributions nowadays, thanks to all the works in the Linux community. NVIDIA themselves actually did a really good job making sure the Linux proprietary drivers are working properly in recent years. I remember talking about the fact I was able to use a newer NVIDIA driver version on an Arch-based Linux distribution than my friend on Windows in one of my previous videos. But still, there are other issues in Linux driver. Let's take printers, fingerprints, and every scanners as examples. Unfortunately, Linux is quite behind in this area. One of the biggest Linux podcasts, Linux Unplugged, suggested everyone to buy with compatibility in mind. But that suggestion is not suitable for all the new Linux users who already bought the incompatible hardware. I was facing this issue in this video trying to set up my father's laptop with his printer slash scanner. I ended up solving this issue by using AUR, ArchWiki, and ArchBase Manjaro. Yes, he is still using Manjaro after six months. 
But the dilemma here is that not everyone is patient enough to learn how to use AUR in their very first distribution, even when they choose Manjaro. For fingerprint scanner, it is always good to choose a distribution that comes with GNOME or KDE Plasma as the default desktop environment. But catches are, first, you need to build from the source code. Having it in AUR for Arch does not necessarily make it easier for new users. And second, you may not have the supported scanner on your specific laptop to begin with. As for the Windows Hello feature, it seems it can be set up using a program called Howdy. It is available on all the major distributions as long as you have an IR emitter and webcam. Just be aware, it is not as secure as the password, and it can be tricked by a similar looking person, or maybe even a photo. Another issue is that Linux desktop has a much smaller market compared to Windows, and it has so many variants that vendors can't just build the drivers for every single distribution out there. They can't utilize something like Flatpak either because fingerprints have to work on the system level for users to do the authentications. And Flatpak is operating outside of the core system for the exact same reason, which is not to grant any unnecessary system permissions to applications. Vendors need to make money, and it makes no financial benefits for hiring people to program those drivers on Linux if they do not ship their hardware with Linux in the first place. The final reason you need to consider when it comes to driver is that different distributions have different ways of installing drivers you need to use different strategies and commands in different systems. Which means you need to prepare to cultivate the habit of tinkering. We Linux users love tinkering, and we take pride in it. But not everyone is the same. My girlfriend ended up choosing Chromebook for the exact same reason. She just wants a system that will work when she needs it to work, which is not the majority of the time she's online. Most of the time, iPad and phone apps are more than enough for her to live a quality digital life. Now, let's talk about the look and feel. In most cases, the major Linux distributions are shipping with a popular desktop environment as the default. These desktops are either inspired by Windows or Mac OS. In general, if you're a newcomer and not familiar with the desktop customization, you have to stick with one look for a long time because they are familiar enough to Windows or Mac OS and not exactly the same. You might get some cringe feelings using it. My friend told me he had to leave KDE because it looks similar and different at the same time compared to Windows. If you can endure the themes, the other issue is desktop environments are using different coding libraries for their interface. Same application may look different on different distributions out of the box which will confuse the heck out of the new users. But that is not the biggest issue I face when introducing Linux to the ordinary people. The biggest one is when some of the best functional applications do not care about modern look and embrace the ritual theme. When I was working in Amazon, mercifully, the developers were allowed to use Ubuntu. The company was using Outlook as their email system, and there is no official Linux build for that. The best alternative to connect to our company's email server was Evolution. One day, my colleague came up to my desk to discuss work. He was shocked by how old Evolution looked. I had the same experience when setting it up for my girlfriend. She was instantly requesting me to find another email client. Now I want to give special thanks to Blood Ghost for leaving this comment asking about fingerprint scanner in Ubuntu which inspired me to make this whole video. So I encourage everyone to ask questions regarding using Linux in the comment section. I do read them all and will see how I can help you. And I bet other people there will do the same if I can't address them properly. So that is all for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.